Janet Scholes. Member Becker. Here. Member DeSimone. Member Johnson. Present. Executive Director Robert McCoy. Present. Deputy Director Miguel Nunez. Present. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, the chorus is a pack of the bells. Uh, this is going to take up an order. Uh, anyone has a little slip there. So we talk about the first bell, the seventh bell, uh, 385. Uh, 335. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, let's talk about this. Anybody in the position on this? Well. <laughs> I don't rather know that we want to take my position, but I, I don't I don't see the need for it, frankly. But I, mean, I, yeah. I I think I you know I respectfully actually actually think it's a very interesting bill. Um, I don't remember if it's the I don't think it's the first time that they've had this legislation. Um, there's been a lot of work around coalitions around it, so I like the idea that at least at the at the um, general election they would have to be 18. Um, I think there's a lot more hurdles than the Board of Elections that they have to jump through, but. Yeah, I um, I feel similarly. I'm actually okay with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm also okay with not taking a position right now, mm -hmm. um, thinking that agreeing with Commissioner Bettenker that they'll probably have a lot more ground to cover for this year, at least. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with taking no position. Okay, so no position on that one. Second one? To, uh, we, uh, do we need to vote on each? each? We do. Okay. Yeah. okay. okay. I'll, I'll move we take no position on it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it. Next mm -hmm. bill is S115. Uh, which will allow and just just interrupt yeah. here that that would be for both bills uh senate uh senate 0035 and house, 0, 0, 5 yep. house 5055 because mm -hmm. i believe they're companion bills yep yes Great. Great. Okay. <laughs> next bill is senate s 115 which is similar to um mm -hmm. house bill 5612 thank you yep <laughs> it's a very small number <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the uh, issue of voting in the primary mm -hmm. by unaffiliated voters. This is, I, I, I like the bill. I just, I took a look at, at it um, when it was sent to us, and I think it's a really interesting bill. I was glad that the staff mentioned its support to it. Yeah, same. Saying? Yeah. Same. Well, yeah, I think it's. I think it's. I think they're good bills. I mm -hmm. think it's. Uh, we want to make it easier, not mm -hmm. not more difficult. I think it makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Can we have a motion? Oh no, it's on. Um, yeah. yeah, there we go. Oh, so sorry, I'm trying. Oh, to I'm so sorry. Oh, yes, <laughs> sorry. I got distracted. Wow, things happen with the microphone right now. All right, so you move in favor then? Yes. Okay. Second. Second. All. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Aye. No. All the favors, the ayes have it. Next bill is S124, which is equivalent to House Bill, was it 5267? Uh, yeah. uh, this bill would uh, remove the requirement that unopposed candidates who have valid, who file a valid declaration of candidacy need to. Uh, to file nomination signatures for certification. So that so if you just file, there's no opponent. You don't have to file nomination papers. Yeah. I don't. I don't know that I agree with that. I think we've talked about this subject before, and I think it does show even if a candidate is unopposed, gathering those signatures does show mm -hmm. it. It takes the effort to gain support from your constituents. So. Um, I would not be in favor of this, um, but I think I'm okay taking no position, but. Um, Can I ask, and I don't know if anybody ahead, would know, but it, is, is is this the case in any other states? Of, because I, I was actually really surprised. I don't, I never thought of it. And a part of me, you know, to, to commissioner, to commissioner's point, like 
yes, they should get signatures, but I was really intrigued do, if we know anybody who doesn't okay. do it. We don't. Uh, something like this generally is under the the responsibility of the Secretary of State's office, and this isn't our bill, so we didn't mm. do that kind of research on it. Oh, um, and I would and I would think that for any any of these bills where you see our position, um, we sort of have a position when it affects the administration of the mm -hmm. election. Um, but if it's more of a policy decision, yeah. then we we don't have a position generally. But we just look at it as how how would this how would we administer this mm -hmm. affect the administration of the election? So and this this would not affect administration on our of the election on mm -hmm. our part. Okay. So Lou, what do you think? I, I mean. I, I'm fine. However, the the, the um, subcommittee wants to go on it. it. To me, it's whether they have to get signatures or not. You're going to be on a post. It's the one thing you're going to have to do is mm -hmm. go up and get mm -hmm. some signatures and then wait till November. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I I don't think it's burdensome, um, and I, I don't have a problem taking no position on it and just you know letting the chips fall where they may. Mm -hmm. oh, I I feel as though if someone's really interested in running for office, they go and get signatures from mm -hmm. least they get to yeah. Play. Mm -hmm. They're very member because they're, yeah. they're not going to be campaigning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Should go meet okay? their constituents. So I, I say that uh, I take a position that uh, to, I w to oppose that. That's my position yeah. on that. So, you know, I would I would second that. Yep. Okay. okay. I would agree. Okay. Yeah. So all in favor? Aye. 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 So we're going to oppose that one. That was. Uh, I had a question. That yes. was for support or uh, oppose. opposed? Opposing it. We're opposing it. Oppose. Opposing it. Correct. Yeah. Okay, next bill is S-147, which is equivalent to yeah. House Bill, looks like 5308. And with this bill, it's a joint resolution to provide for submission to voters of a constitutional amendment uh, to require Lieutenant Governor and the Governor to run as a team. Okay, that's... I mean, I, interesting one. If I can go first, I mean, yeah, I think it's a policy decision, and mm -hmm. I, I don't think we should take a position on it. But again, I'm 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 open to any anybody okay. saying anything they want. But I I agree. I just yeah. think it's a policy decision. So it's great that yeah. it's going to go to the voters. Okay, so want we'll to make a motion? I'll, I'll move to take no position. Mm -hmm. Second. So, okay, all in favor? Say aye. 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 So we're going to take no position on that one. The next bill is mm. S three two two. Which is equivalent to, looks like. Um, it's 5649. 5649. Where is that? I think it's on page two. Um, yeah, 5649. Okay. So this would act would uh, establish ranked choice voting mm -hmm. and all, at least in the primaries. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a hot issue. Mm -hmm, uh, in fact, there is a uh, Senate committee studying mm -hmm. this or commission studying this. I think I'm Bob's on that position, that committee. So, Bob, what are your thoughts on that? Well, at this point, the co commission that's been put together is to do a study. Mm -hmm. right, so they'll be looking for some input from the board as part uh, of that study? At the end, they may, yeah, yes. Yeah, so. All right, so I guess it's ready for a little discussion. Mm -hmm. So, anyone have feelings about this? Um, not feelings, just a comment. I, I know it's been brewing for a while, mm -hmm. and I've been hearing people, you know, leaders in the community talking about mm -hmm. it. And there's also, in addition to the commission, I believe there's a coalition mm -hmm. that has been started um, to sort of push for it. Um, I, I would wait on a study. I mean, I would want to know more. I'm not really for or against it. I think it's interesting. I'd want to know what other states are doing it and how it works. Mm -hmm. I presume, Miguel, is that, is that what the thinking was by the staff taking no position on it because mm -hmm. the commission studying it and we don't have enough information yet? Or was it a follow-up? Exactly. I, I think just because we're on that commission, um, it wouldn't yeah, it would. As far as putting going against yeah. it or forward, when we're on the commission, we're trying to give input. Absolutely, yeah. No, I mean, I think, we've, I think we put you in a in a mm -hmm. difficult position if we make a if we make a decision on it, and then and I'm on the, the commission. The commission. Mm -hmm. That's That's true. Commission. Yeah, I think we we do have that. questions, but we'll we'll, yeah. we'll handle that at the at the, commission. the commission level. I'd move to take no position. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next bill is 
S327, equivalent to House Bill 5123. Uh, act would include electronic mail or text, which can be received by 2,000 or more persons to those independent expenditures that must be reported on this act. Okay, that would increase the um, expenditure, uh, the contribution from 1,000 to 2,000 dollars. Is that it, Miguel? Uh, yes, uh, Rick spoke to both of us on this, and he wasn't in favor of it because of the uh, updating it. Uh, he was Rick Thornton was in favor of it his, from his staff based on it bringing in line with modern communications. So he wasn't, or he, he was? He was. He was. was. Okay, sorry. Was. He, he's in favor of it. He is. Yes. says to support he here. He supports it. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anybody have a motion on this one? I mean, I I just think it closes up. Mm -hmm. A section of the uh, of the campaign finance law. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I would I would move to support it. Yeah. The same point. Yeah. Okay. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Next bill is S three four zero equivalent to House Bill H five six one zero. Oh, this act would limit the number of signatures that a candidate may submit for mm -hmm. certification to 100 if 50 signatures are required and to 150 mm -hmm. when 100 signatures are required. Uh, seems to be a bit of a problem because mm -hmm. if you don't qualify yeah. with 100, with the with, uh, minimum number because uh, if you have 50 required mm -hmm. signatures and you only submit 100 but mm -hmm. uh, 52 are disqualified, mm -hmm. the person doesn't, mm -hmm. it's not on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't quite make sense. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. you have more experience in this than yes. probably any of us. Yeah. Yeah. You tell me what you think. I would say <laughs> you want to get as many signatures as possible because people, people will sign a nomination papers because they don't want to say no. Exactly. And they're not even a voter. They mm -hmm. might not even live in the district. In the district mm -hmm. yeah. So you really don't know. Or the person <laughs> signs, they haven't registered to vote. Mm -hmm. Or they find that they they're not living at that address, or they are out of staters, yeah. and they all sign. Very, very true. I mean, I've seen more than fifty get denied. Yeah, I think yeah. I think this I think last session, yeah. Get yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah. I, I did some work with canvases. Mm -hmm. I've seen you know on a, on a, somebody submits a hundred signatures. I've seen over fifty get denied. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are seeing it right here. We had yeah. a few candidates yeah. show up, and they yeah. were shy, one or two. Yeah. They mm -hmm. couldn't get on the ballot. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And uh, we don't have a position on this, but just some background, I think, because I was at the committee hearing at the State House, and we've dealt with this over the years. I think the intent of this is that sometimes a board of canvassers would certify like 300 signatures for one candidate, even though they only need 50. But then for their opponent, they would only certify 60. You know, so the local politicians think it's, you know, sometimes oh, you have more support because you got more signatures mm -hmm. than me, but but you got only 60, 10 over the minimum. I think that's some of the discussion that yeah. was happening at the committee mm -hmm. hearing at mm -hmm. the State House. Um, uh, so there were the same concerns that you just mentioned about getting knocked out because you don't have enough signatures <clears throat> was brought up Good. at the committee what if, I mean, you, 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 vote, you, get, you get 500 signatures. Yeah. I say good for you. Yeah. <laughs> right. You, you don't it. have to turn them all in. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you turn it up. And if someone is really interested in, in running for office, they'll turn in the signatures yeah. piecemeal. And make sure they're they're, they're, they're certified, uh, but yeah. some candidates wait to the very end and they're cut short. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I this bill I think has some serious ramifications for yeah. people who really want to run. Okay, just, so uh, chair, if I may, yeah. um, just a comment. I'm having flashbacks of the challenges to nomination signatures, and so just want to. I don't remember where we landed on this because I I agree. By the way. Um, where we landed on sort of tightening up and um, level setting sort of the canvassers, the cities and towns, the way that they're qualifying or disqualifying, did because we, we did mm -hmm. we talk about, about, about that, we but did. I don't that's, know. That's, that's separate from this. That's separate from this. Okay, so we but we put something into place where we're gonna we are make that system more yeah. um, consistent. More okay. Yes. 
Yeah, we have the nomination papers from the, they sent us the nomination papers from the Secretary of State, the form, and they want our input as far as how to make it more uh, uniform. Mm, yeah. That's okay. the word I was looking for. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I oppose it, and personally, I'll, I'll, okay. move, I'll move to oppose. So I'll second that. Anybody discussion that? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, Subcommittee opposes that one. Next bill is S4343, equivalent to House Bill 5234. And this bill will require any person seeking office of governor to live in Rhode Island for at least five years prior to the election for that office. Okay. What is this O three four three? Oh, three four three. Yeah. Uh, I I I don't think that we I I don't think that we should I think we should oppose because I I you know Commissioner someone mentioned earlier right like we should be making it easier for people to vote but this is a democracy it's five years and this is a very reactive bill and it's all we've seen in the last five years people being reactive in legislation mm. i think yeah i mean this this bill has a name right this bill has a name yeah. it has several <laughs> names in the yes Many names. it is a very problematic bill in my opinion if you want to move to oppose i'll second it okay. thank you i move to oppose this bill i'll second it all right all in favor aye aye, aye. opposed next bill is Three S three six four that would repeal the state identification law. I think Miguel has some interesting remarks on this one. Uh, well, I, I think from a policy standpoint, we don't have a position whether or not identification should be um, required or not for voting. I know that's a can be a contentious issue, mm -hmm. um, but as far as an administrative standpoint, um, the identification over ninety percent of voters use their Rhode Island driver's license or their Rhode Island state ID to, to check in um, to vote, um, which which is very, they scan the back of the barcode, their record comes up, they sign in almost like a 20 second, 15 second transaction. Um, so it, it's very efficient and that, that's including during, elect, during early voting as well. Um, manual checking of voters, meaning that bringing up their the keypad on the iPad, manually searching in their name, where you have women who might have be under their maiden name, for example, or or who may have changed their name, or anyone could change their name, really, um, or hyphenated names in Hispanic communities can be tricky too. That takes a lot more time to look up than with an identification with a barcode on the back of your license. So, from an administrative standpoint, we prefer to have the identification uh -huh. um, because it does streamline processing, it makes it much more efficient. Right. So that barcode is very important yes. for mm -hmm. expediting the voters coming to uh, to vote. Yes. You say yes, correct. Yeah, and in terms of um, for 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 uh, provisional ballots, if someone does not have the identification, they can use one of other the passport or different types of identification as well. In addition to that driver's license, but if they do not have an identification then they complete a provisional ballot. When that provisional ballot goes back to the local board, the local board compares the signature on that provisional ballot to the signature that is on the voter's voter registration record. And if those signatures match, then the provisional ballot is counted. So that is the safeguard. If someone does not have the identification, they do get their signatures matched in the back end um, to that for that provisional ballot to be counted. So in the last election, how many provisional ballots were cast? Um, I believe we had over 1,500 mm -hmm. uh, total. Right. Out of the total votes cast? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. So so currently, as, as we're operating currently, if you don't have a driver's license, you can still vote. Yes. You can. Yes. You can. Yeah. Anyone have a position on this? I mean, I, I would move to oppose. Okay. I think we'd be only to have a second? I would second. Uh, I Just a different. comment, though, again. Um, <laughs> I'm always interested in other in other states, like where's where there is precedent and where it, you know, where it works and that efficiency they've been able to figure that out. I don't need to know that right now, but I think I think this is gonna going to continue to mm -hmm. come up. Um, it's got you know a lot of people testifying for it, so just you know for future years and as we go on, would just be interested where that's done. 
Um, but I would second opposition. I'll I'll just share in comments. I won't vote in in for for this. I I think I agree. I understand the administrative part of it. I just think in general, and as you yeah. mentioned, it's a very it's a, it's an issue that I think has ramifications are, are around voting for people, um, especially marginalized people. So I'll be voting against uh, supporting it. Yeah. Well, I found when I visited polling stations, the voters really appreciate the use of their driver's license to expedite the yeah. line yeah. that's being processed. Uh, so I think this brings us into the 22nd century or 21st century uh, uh, in the administration of the uh, voting. So. We have a motion here to oppose it. Uh, no, to support it. Oh, to, oh to, to oppose it, sorry. We're yep. going to, to support that. the yep. opposing. Opposing. It was confusing. <laughs> yeah, that was very confusing. Yeah. 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 Okay, uh, we have a second? Yes. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, the one. Okay, yes, so that was three to one. Up. Opposed. The next bill is Senate Bill 380. The act would amend certain election statutes to require ballot questions to be written in plain language, reasonably calculated to be understood by persons with middle school reading comprehension skills. Well, that's sort of a mouthful there. Yeah. <laughs> I. We can parse that and say yeah. what is meant by middle school reading <laughs> skills, but. Yeah. I, I looked at the bill and I don't know if it's the first time that it's been introduced. I, when I read ballot questions, there are times that I have to reread them. <laughs> and I just also want to add that uh, ballot questions are also translated in Spanish. And as someone who's bilingual, both languages are incredibly difficult to read. And so, so it's not any better. It's not any better in Spanish. <laughs> I think it's worse. Um, <clears throat> So I think it's a really interesting language in in the U.S. Maybe, most most people actually that's their reading level. So maybe instead of written calculated to be understood by persons mm. with middle school reading comprehension, maybe the people writing it need middle school reading comprehension. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. The bill needs to be transposed. Needs to be transposed. But, you know, it's it's my understanding that uh, when. Uh, these um, bond issues and ballot issues come on uh, that the actual language is required is uh, imposed upon uh, the Secretary of State by the General Assembly uh, to the specific language uh, on the ballot. So, do you know anything about that, Miguel? State questions. Yeah, on state questions. State yeah. questions. Yeah. Usually the local questions are crafted by the, the community that's putting it on. It's, uh, and the local questions, it's crafted by the community that wants it on their ballot. Mm. And then on the state level? It's done by the state. It's, it's done by the Secretary of State. Secretary of State or General Assembly? Um, I can't answer that, no. but it is done at the state level. Yeah, because I've seen some legislation where the actual language is in the yeah. uh, resolution mm -hmm. as to what is going to appear on the ballot. Uh, I don't know how to tell you when I... Legal counsel for the secretary for a while. It was, it was my job to go through the local questions and change them and send them back yeah. to the town council. I don't know if they still do that. Mm -hmm. I used to send them back to the town council and say, I don't know. What this is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would concur um, with I mean, the commissioner. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, All right. I'm not sure this language would rectify that. Yeah. No. That's, that's the only thing. So, well, I. Just think, just an additional comment. I concur. I often have to read them a few times or pre-read them. Um, and I think if we want, I can imagine there are people who just check whatever or don't even vote because they're in the booth and not. So I think the more, if these questions are obviously important when they're on the ballot, um, that we would want people to, you know, be able to make an educated decision. So, I mean, I'm okay not taking a position, but I support, I definitely yeah. support yeah. these changes. Yeah. I think, I think we should take a position. I think it's, I think it would be just, just that, I right? We that. keep talking yeah. about voters. I think, I think we should uh, support the legislation. I would second. Interesting. Well, second. I think if we step further, <clears throat> you know, the Secretary of State sends out this mm. 
pamphlet mm -hmm. before every election explaining mm -hmm. what's on the ballot as far as the ballot questions are concerned. And some of that ex explanation uh, um, is rather esoteric. Mm. And it doesn't give the entire background of what the ramifications are or the consequences of, of that uh, if that, that legislation is passed. Uh, so I, I think this is something the Secretary of State should be working with mm -hmm. um, and say, look, maybe we ought to review all this and see exactly what we're going to present to the voters. Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of difficult to do that by legislation. Yeah. Okay. I think, I mean, I think the intent is great. Yeah. I just mm -hmm. don't think this is going to solve it. I agree. It's gonna so I would second the support of it, it just on the just on the principle and yeah, but you know you support the, the principle but not the bill. I support the bill. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, all right. So we have a motion to <clears throat> uh, to support the bill, seconded. Um, any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 No. And I say no too. So it's mm -hmm. two to two. So what happened? No position. No right. position. Yes. Yeah. That's easy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Next bill, <clears throat> the Senate Bill 384, which is an act would authorize designated state and local officials with supervisory responsibility over polling locations, the use of of amber flashing safety lights on their vehicles. <laughs> that's so interesting. Wow. Well, who's going to pay for that? That's us. <laughs> that's us. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's also the locals. Yeah. That's us, too, yeah. though. You, you can get flashing lights. Can we get those? Flashy you lights? Oh. You put those on our roof, or mm -hmm. what are we doing? You can just give you the put the magnet light. up on your roof, roof, and off you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, then you can, I mean, you use it when there's traffic. Yeah, oh. so I can I'm, vote I'm, early, right? I'm, All right. I'm, I'm, All in support. Who's in there? I thought I was in the car today. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to take no position, but if one board member would like the lights, I'll go along with it. Uh, Bob, what do you think? Uh, what's the big demand for this? Um, <clears throat> as you can see from the document I provided, we have no position. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Disappointment. All right. Disappointment. Commissioner Disappointment is very sad now. All right. So, <clears throat> you want to make a motion? Uh, I'll move no position. Okay. Do we have a second? Okay, all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, okay. no position. <clears throat> <clears throat> Next bill is Senate Bill 395. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we can find this. It's very interesting. We have this here, Senate Bill 395. Okay. Uh, this act would require <clears throat> that only the male ballot voter, their spouse, court appointed guardian, cohabitant, or any adult person related to the voter by blood or marriage be allowed to physically mail the voted male ballot in a violation would be a misdemeanor. <clears throat> okay, that means a neighbor can't bring the ballot to the, okay, uh, the lawyer can't bring it for, on behalf of the client. And how, how, <clears throat> how would you determine, how would you determine who brought it to the post office? Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't well, exactly. Maybe there would be a, uh, I don't think you can. It's, it would be, if we were going to be enforcing that, that would be, be unenforceable because how would know. we how know who mailed it? Yeah. Us and says mm -hmm. that that's what happened. What do we, yeah. how do we make that mm -hmm. determination? We can't prove it. Mm -hmm. just prove it. Exactly. We'd, we'd be making a determination of criminal offense for someone that we have no idea how to mm -hmm. prove that. I would, I would move to oppose this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would second. Okay. <laughs> Good idea. The discussion, if not, then we'll vote on it. All in favor of the motion to Oppose it? Aye. 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 Oppose. Motion carries. We're opposed. Mm. Next position, the next bill is 484. <clears throat> That's the equivalent to House Bill mm -hmm. 5547. Uh, the act would require the Student Advisory Council to meet at least quarterly and provide the chairperson with equal voting powers as an adult member on the council. 
that the student is under 18 of age, they shall be exempt from the Senate advice and consent process. So uh, I, who knows I, about this? Yeah, any thoughts? Mm -hmm. I don't know why this has applies to us at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. This doesn't seem like we would why have a, yeah. Before the, it's this is a judiciary thing. Elementary and yeah. secondary, right? Yeah, this mm -hmm. is up to them. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. Um, I, I don't think it's um, specific. It was flagged as elections oh, because for of whatever voting? reason. Mm -hmm. um, but, it says but I don't think it, that's why we have no position on it. It's not something that affects the administration, the election. So. Oh, so it's not within our bailiwick. So we'll just uh, pass on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll move to take no position. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. No position. <clears throat> Next bill is Senate Bill S608, okay. equivalent to House Bill uh, 5770. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. five, seven, seven, uh, it's a joint resolution would uh, propose to the voters of the state a constitutional amendment that would move remove the 30-day state and local residency requirement and require the voter to be registered by or on election day. It would also provide that no person would be eligible to file a declaration of candidacy who had not been a qualified elector in Rhode Island for at least 30 days. Uh, it's the same day voter registration. Okay, so, mm -hmm. but it's the declaration of candidacy is different. So it's removing the 30 so day requirement for voters. Correct, yes. So and it would keeping be it for yeah, it's, okay. I think the way the explanation was written is confusing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think I am in agreement with this. I think people, we should mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. prevent people from regis registering to vote if mm -hmm. they have, you know, all the qualifications mm -hmm. to be a registered voter. Yeah. So I would actually, I would support this. I, it, I don't want to curb other comments if mm -hmm. there are any, but. Yeah, I would agree. Well, this is only a proposal to send it to have a constitutional Right. That's correct. Yeah. So I, would, I, I would support sending it for a constitutional amendment, mm -hmm. right? whether I support the actual language mm -hmm. or not. Is mm -hmm. So the, the staff um, didn't have a position on this per se. Um, it's a policy decision, the number of days uh, someone will register. However, this, 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 this proposal is different from past years where it actually puts it in the state constitution, mm -hmm. um, the same day voter registration right. where it's currently 30 days. In the past, um, it's the, the 30 days in the Constitution has been a hindrance because it does allows less flexibility for voter registration. Um, this would require it to happen, though. So if this was approved by the voters, it would replace the 30 days with the same day registration in the Constitution. So it would be required under statute after that. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as the same day, the staff didn't have a position. We, we did mm -hmm. have concerns about replacing the 30 days in the state constitution with um, another requirement, which would be zero days, which would be same day. Um, in the past, the proposal has been to just remove the number from the state constitution and just have it in statute. So it's in statute and the constitution right now. You can't change the statute uh, because the constitution says 30 days. Um, if you remove the number from the constitution, then the statute can be adjusted from 30 down to zero. Um, if needed. So this would replace one requirement in the Constitution with another, which would give us less flexibility um, to, to, to modify the statute down the road um, if, if needed. Um, we're not we're through the General Assembly um, if we were to request that. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is actually amending the Constitution to mm -hmm. have same day. Correct. Past proposals and, require and a two-step process. There are only 22 states that do same day registration, right? Yes, but there's only one Minnesota that has it in the Constitution. The rest have it in their statute. So can you explain to me, mm -hmm. you said that if it was in the Constitution, it would make it harder later on for us to somehow, you, you mentioned, like, what, what, what would be, what would happen for us? So the, the 30 days has been a, um, an issue for us because... Um, if we, in the past, we've tried to broaden it. If you move from one city or town, Rhode Island is very small. Mm -hmm. So if you move from Providence to Cranston, we, in the past, we had looked at why could you not go to your polling place Correct. in Cranston mm -hmm. and, and change your address right there and vote a full ballot because you moved from Providence to Cranston. Mm -hmm. um, if you move within Providence, 
you can move anywhere within one location to another location and vote a full ballot. But when you move from one city to another city, the rules change. Now you, you're not eligible for a full ballot at your new location mm -hmm. in your new city or town because the constitution says 30 days. And in order to change that, and, and years ago we had a proposal to, to, to modify that, it was said that it's in the constitution, it's 30 days. So you had to live in Cranston for 30 days to be eligible for a ballot in Cranston for 30 days. Mm -hmm. So then that, that wasn't able to be <clears throat> modified, that process. So this change here would actually make same day register. So that would actually uh, alleviate that problem. This, this little statute would help right. that, but it would also put it in the constitution. So in order to get it changed back to 20 days or 15 days or 10, if it's a something else, it would have to go again before the voters in order so to be what, changed. What you're suggesting is in the constitution that you, the staff, and I say you, I mean, our staff would prefer that the day be removed, but not spe specified same day, but have the day requirement removed so that in the event that legislation came in, you could adjust the days to be same day, five days, 10 days, 12 yeah. days, whatever you wanted. Correct. Correct. And that was past proposals. It just removed the 30 days from the Constitution. And then a second proposal would have to be made to change the statute from 30 to same day. Okay. This would change it all at once. Right. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion. Did you make a motion today? I did. I moved to, where are we? I moved to support. I second. No. Nope. You're feeling about no, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to vote, but I'm, I'm voting no. Okay. 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 All right. So uh, there are, um, so we'll call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? No. And there are two no's. On that so that's no position next bill is s628 the act would require the state use the actual residence of a person in government custody which i guess is prison for redistricting purposes such information would be collected by the Department of Corrections and then forwarded to the Secretary of State to be utilized for redistricting. Secretary of State would be required to file annual reports. And this is just a big background. There's always been a dispute every time there's reapportionment to how to uh, count the people in incarcerated in, in Cranston. Or are those people included in the districts in Cranston or do you take the uh, home address of the incarcerated mm -hmm. and uh, and include them in their home districts. Mm -hmm. uh, so this bill is an attempt to address that particular position. Mm -hmm. Any have other position on that? We uh, have no position. Have we ever had a position on this? This is, happens every year. We, every, it would happen every 10 years. No, no, I, we, I mean, this bill in, is introduced every year. So I'm asking if you've ever had a position on it. We have not. Have you ever been asked? to have a position on it. We have not. No, I don't think we've time. ever had a position on this, no. We have not. And, and from my, just my personal point of view is when they do um, redistricting, which is done every 10 mm -hmm. years, some of these people that are in government custody may not be permanently in government yeah. custody forever. Mm -hmm. So they may be going back to yeah. somewhere else in the state. Uh, yeah, I mean, I personally am <laughs> confused to why this we don't count their mm -hmm. actual addresses. Their I think it's address. very, yeah, their it's home issue, address. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Plus, you've got a lot of individuals who are been accused and convicted and imprisoned who don't who do not live in the state. Mm -hmm. They're out of staters to begin with. That's a good point. Uh, and those people, how are you going to determine their home address? Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah. So, yeah. do we have a motion? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I, it's a, I really like the bill. Yeah. Right? I really, I, like. I, I think from a civil rights perspective, it's a really important bill. I don't know how important it is for us to have a position, so I don't. I'm not sure. I'm yeah. stuck. I, I really think it's something that the uh, general assembly should grapple with. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they yeah. should actually fix yeah. it. So, 
Do we have a motion to? <laughs> I mean, I'll, as similar as Commissioner Bettenker, I mean, I personally, as a you know, citizen, and from uh, that perspective, support this. I think, given mm -hmm. um, the timing of that, you know, there's a large runway for the next time it's done. I, I would, I would like to see it eventually, but grappled with. Um, so I am, I will move that I'm okay with taking no position okay. this time. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So no position. Aye. Right, so next bill is the Senate bill S638. Mm -hmm. House bill 5959. Five, five, uh, this act would allow citizens of a city or town who are at least 18, mm. 16 years of age to register to vote and to oh, vote in the school committee mm. election in the municipalities when the school committees are elected entities. Mm. This is interesting. It's similar to the first one, yeah. but a little different. Yes. This is like all politics are local. <laughs> this is, you know, young people voting for who's going to make decisions for them. Mm. I think it's an important bill. Well, what's the I difference agree. between, you may point out, sitting on the school board or being a liaison to the school board? Um, wait, does it say what do you mean? Should, yeah. It's should a, should a 16-year-old have a vote, or should they, they just be a liaison and explain the, the student's position to the school committee? Yeah, I mean, this is this is actually the vote in school committee elections. Correct, yeah. which and, is, like yeah. several and cities in, have it. And in most of the small municipalities, mm -hmm. those budgets for school committee mm -hmm. are represent really probably 60, 70 percent of the entire town budget. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and the only the only concern I would have is, I mean, I, and I don't want to disparage anybody, any any of our young people, but I, I mean, sometimes the vote is a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I, I, I don't know that that's what you want. But, but isn't I, it always a popularity I'll, contest? Yeah. I, guess I'll, I, guess I'll, I guess I'll defer to yeah, I, I guess, but I mean, it's a popularity contest by adults. Mm -hmm. So a 16-year-old can't enter into a contract. A 16-year-old can't be held accountable for anything they do. But we're going to let them vote, and mm -hmm. I, I just, I'm not, I'm not sure where where that goes and and where this bill goes. What what's the thinking is beyond this bill? But um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll defer to my colleagues. Yeah, I, I, I just uh, oh, go ahead. Me. No, just go ahead. As, uh, administrative nothing to do with the policy of right. the age but um, whenever you have a different subset of people eligible for certain ballots that at the polling place that leads to you would have to have a different ballot for that voter so for example if a 16 mm -hmm. year old came in oh, it'd be a school he board. would get he or she would get a separate ballot with just school committee um, so mm -hmm. you would always have that possibility that they could get a full ballot in, in error by the poll workers or so there is the administrative part of it where when they come in you have to give them the ballot that they specifically are eligible mm -hmm. for um, so that would just impact the polling place I mean it's something that could be done but mm -hmm. it would just make the administration of it trickier at the at the local level I mean and and I'm not sure why why just school committee why not all local elections well, because it's direct, I think the intent would be behind that. It's, it's you know, a, as it's school the committee the there. Yeah, it's like a direct, impact. more of a direct impact, I guess. Yeah, I feel I like mean, this is a way for, for like us to soften the, legis the legislature and be like, it matters <laughs> to the kids. And yeah. so I think that's what this is. Yeah, I also, um, you know, I think Commissioner DeSimone, I think your, your points are valid um, and also hard to, you know, I mean, I know for my 12 year olds could probably vote for school committee and inform himself. He's civically engaged and that might not be the case with all, but I, I personally am, I like this bill and, you know, I would support it. Well, so do we have, a, I, I personally, um, my feeling on this is that it's going to create a problem in the integrity of the ballot, just as Miguel pointed out. How are we going to process all this? Um, and I think it's going to pose a problem. Um, just uh, from the mechanical mechanical point of view, or an administration of the election. So, uh, let's vote on it. 
your move to support. Yes. Right? Yep. Okay. Okay. Second. We have a second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Okay, shall we vote on those of the favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. No. And I have two no's. So no position is taken on this bill. I think we'll leave it to the General Assembly to make that decision. All right. Next bill is a House bill, which doesn't appear to be an equivalent to a Senate bill. That's House Bill 5124. The act would prohibit lobbyists from making any political contribution to any member of the General Assembly from January 1 to July 1 in any year, unless the General Assembly adjourns the year prior to July. Wow. That's, wow, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of words. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Really. What does this have to do with the board other than the political contributions? Yeah. Okay. Bob, do you? About campaign finance has mm. no position on yeah. this bill. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a this is a lot. Yeah, this bill is, has many layers to it, so I feel like yeah. we shouldn't have a position I'll, on I'll, it. I'll, I'll move no. no position. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. aye. Okay. Next bill is a House bill, 5185. The act would change the process of nominating candidates for the general election by replacing the political party primary with a primary general election. The new election would allow candidates for all recognized political parties and independents to run against each other on the same ballot with the top two vote getters for each available office qualifying for the general election. Uh, this has been around a long time too, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, I guess, an, an attempt to get people to run for office and um, avoid the issue of a small number of people mm. voting in a primary to determine who's going to be the, yeah. the winner of the general election because of the way of the political makeup in the state. So that's the brief background of this. Mm. Anybody have a position? I mean, I, I like the bill, but I don't know that it's within our realm that mm -hmm. we should be deciding. So. Yes. I don't, it's know, a, I don't know how anybody else feels. Yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's a great idea. But yeah, I think it's... From a personal standpoint, I think it's a, it's a good idea. I think it's yeah, certainly... At, at least the intent behind it, I mean, is to get people involved. Mm -hmm. Well, the idea is the, the, bed, the bedrock of democracy is the yep. election. So Absolutely. the idea is to get as many people as possible mm -hmm. to run for office. Yep. Uh, uh, but this is, I think, something that the General Assembly has mm. to grapple with. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Right. Right. So we have a motion? I'll make a motion to take no position. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So no position is taken. Next is House Bill H5267. The Act would provide that any person convicted of sedition, insurrection, rebellion, or felony in relation to any such act would permanently forfeit the person's right to be elected, and such privileges as an elector be prohibited from being a candidate or holding office in this state and be, prohib be prohibited from being employed by the state or any political subdivision. Mike. All right. So. Um, um, I was, this is, earlier I mentioned how there's, yes. there's, there's bills that were just reactionary bills. Yes. I, I think this is a reactionary bill and it, it would be a great lawsuit against the state if this ever happened. Uh, is it sedition against the state of Rhode Island or is it sedition <laughs> against the U.S. government, right? Yeah. I can't think of any example where there's been sedition against the state of Rhode Island. Maybe yeah. Doors Rebellion Not yet. in 1847. Oh, that's right. 
a few years and back. How do you even define right. each of these? So do you have a motion? Mm -hmm. uh, move to have no position on this okay. or oppose it? I don't... I don't know. I'm happy to oppose it. I would love to oppose it. But if okay, you ever, can. You thank can. Thank you. you can. I move to oppose this. Sure. I yes. will second. Okay. Your opposition. Okay. Uh -huh. All in favor of opposing, say aye. 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 Oh. Yes. No. So the, we're opposed. Next bill seems to be a repeat. Five three zero eight. Uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the next bill. Well, I don't know. 5308 has no Senate. It has no Senate. Nope. Oh, counterpart. Well, 308, this is this only this only gives them a small window for the emergency mm -hmm. ballot, right? Yes. Is this the window correct. bill? Oh, correct. Yep. The yes. window bill. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean I think that's too short. Too tight. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you right. an emergency. If it's an emergency, it's an emergency. Correct. I, I'm gonna move to oppose. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. Ayes have it. We're opposed. Next bill is H Bill H5309. The act will require the primary election date, typically the eighth Tuesday after pre preceding the biennial state election, shall be held on the Wednesday immediately following Labor Day. Only of the eighth Tuesday immediately follows Labor Day. I know we had this problem in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so I, I mean, it's, I think this makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would move to support. Yeah, I think you're right. I'll okay. okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 We're supporting that. <laughs> Next bill is H 5385. This act would recreate a new additional post election risk. Limiting audit on voted mail ballots, mm -hmm. focusing on voter signature verification. I think we know where that came from. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the staff is opposing that. So yeah. I would move to oppose it. Okay. Second. Okay. okay. All in favor of opposing, say aye. 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 Okay. The ayes have it. Proposed. Next bill is House Bill 5455. The act would require all candidates for office to file the same number of campaign finance reports, all due at the same time, whether or not they have or had a contested primary election. I don't understand. Yes. I was like, I don't. Yes, this maybe. is this is the middle the middle school one. They can, can they just <laughs> some kind of language for me? You She's understand? a very smart woman. And I do not understand this. Well, let's see what do you. I read it like five times. I was like, I still don't see it. Still, no. I don't. <laughs> I don't understand. What do you mean? The same number of campaign reports all due at the same time. Well, and I would wonder how that would it also, would it have an impact? I noticed the staff took no position, but yeah. would it have an impact on our campaign finance division? Pro like, if things are flooding in. Again, if I'm understand, <laughs> I don't understand the this language. This sort of, um, I mean, based on our meeting with Rick, um, there are things we have no position on, but would certainly be a challenge to administer, but... If that's the law, that is the policy decision so, to do it. Um, but, but it would be a challenge. It would be an increase yeah. in reports. Because yeah. right now there are different time frames for those with a primary, not with a primary. Right. Uh, it's, deadline, it's, so. If you don't, it, right, if you don't, if you have no primary, you don't, you, you aren't subject to that initial filing. So exactly. I think, I think this is probably an intent to make everybody subject to that initial filing instead of just mm. primary candidate. I, I mean, I, I don't know that. It's sure. it's it's a bit convoluted on on that side. I just again, I I would defer to Miguel a bit and, and the staff as far as you know how they want to administer. But, you know, the staff didn't have a position, but it would certainly increase the, the number of reports because you'd have more people filing in that during that schedule. I mean, I mean, I, I'd move to take no position. I agree with Commissioner Bancroft. It's 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 kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you made a motion. Second. Second. 
Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 So, so noted, no position taken. <clears throat> Next bill is S5461. Uh, <clears throat> this act would authorize cities and towns by ordinance to allow all their residents to vote in, in municipal elections for municipal office holders, regardless of the immigration status of the residents. Um, so I, I think the intent behind the bill is a, is a really is a good one. I think it needs a lot of work. Um, and the sponsor, I've you know the sponsor knows this, um, and so I think that I think it needs a lot of work, and I do not think that we should have a position on this. Other I agree. Questions? I think if there if there can if there can be more yeah, I mean, around it, I, if there was I'm more, I would mm -hmm. support it. But in this case, I would I would second taking no position. Yeah, okay. well, my, my position is this: that we want our immigrants to become American citizens. That's the goal. Yeah, and, and, and the, uh, yeah, and becoming a U.S. citizen is very expensive and is very difficult. So I think like I understand the layers of being able to vote in municipal elections, but it, again. It's not, it needs a lot of work. But the other thing is, you know, if you can vote in a municipal election, you can also run for office. That's true. Yep. So you could have a situ situation where you have a non-citizen uh, mayor of the city. And that That's person's a citizen yeah. of a double country, which poses yeah. a bit of a problem. Well, I think this is, yeah, I think this is where we, where we differ respectfully mm -hmm. is I, you know, I would, it, the, the process, um, as I know it from colleagues and friends, <laughs> um, is very arduous and very expensive. And I think if someone's been here for, you know, it is active participant in other ways in our economy and, and things like that, that mm -hmm. they should be, you know, they should be allowed mm -hmm. to have a voice. But again, um, Commissioner Bettenker's point is it does need a lot of work. So I hope to see it. <laughs> I hope get to see it get done. the work. Yeah. And I will point out from a staff point of view, we don't have a position again. We have policy decision who's allowed mm -hmm. to vote, who's not allowed to vote. Mm -hmm. It's not our purview, but um, that would, as with the 16 year olds, it would create another s ballot style because if someone came in that qualified under these requirements, for, for example, they would need to get a specific ballot just for the municipal offices. So from an administrative standpoint, that would that would have to be handled at the at the polling place, if if something like this were to come down in the future. So how would, <clears throat> how would the poll pads work in that situation? Uh, well, I was at the committee hearing on this one, and it was a little, mm -hmm. it was a bit um, convoluted how this it was explained. But they would be in the central voter registration system to some extent. They would be in as a record but only deemed eligible for that particular ballot that they would be eligible for under the statute, so. And a non-citizen registering to vote, right now you can register to vote at the DMV. Correct. Okay. So <clears throat> would DMV be required to register the non-citizen? Uh, no, no, and I will echo the comments on mm -hmm. how this this needs legislation needs some work because there were some questions from the committee members about mm -hmm. this is actually something that's handled at the municipal level. So Not the municipal the level would have the would register the person mm -hmm. um, and that would be a separate list or mm -hmm. subset of people that would be eligible for that particular ballot for the municipal offices. So it's it's a complex mm -hmm. method that would have to be administered at the mm -hmm. administrated at the polls. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, very specifically yeah. um, if it were to happen in, in, mm -hmm. in the future. Right. <clears throat> okay, so we have a motion <clears throat> to take no position. Yes. I so move okay. to. All second. in favor? No, just second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. I think we'll leave it to the General Assembly to make that decision. But I... <clears throat> Next bill is H5608. The act would amend <clears throat> uh, from 50 feet to 100 feet the distance which may, must be maintained by people at polling places, uh, at the entrance to polling places. <clears throat> and this is to um, uh, meet, the, meet the various uh, voters as they enter the polling station. 
So right now, as it stands, it's 50 feet. The police officer comes out, sprays a line, <clears throat> a 50-foot line around the entrance. <clears throat> and all the campaign supporters are supposed to stand outside that 50-foot line. Oh, the 50-foot okay. <clears throat> line. Is and the candidate must be a stand outside that 50-foot line. So that 50-foot line is sort of like a, uh, uh, an area of no contact uh, for the voters as they enter the voting station. This bill would extend it to 100 feet. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of uh, voting stations right. really can't manipulate the 100 feet. Mm -hmm. That's what I was yeah. wondering, yeah. yeah. Uh, How it would impact the yeah. setup of many of them, yeah, the locations, especially in the urban areas. I mean, I'll move no position. It's whether it's fifty or hundred. I mean, I think some of this is going to go away by the early voting anyway. Mm. Um, I think you're going to have less people voting on election day, but certainly, I if someone thinks that it should be a hundred, um, I'm willing to change that. But right. at this point, I don't. I don't know that it matters to us one way or the other. But so that's your motion. I, I'll no. move to yeah. no. I'll move. Um, <clears throat> no, no Any motion. seconds? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So no position taken. Next bill is uh, House Bill 5718. <clears throat> the act would clarify the qualifications to vote in the elections of the Kingston Fire District. It's weird. Yes. <clears throat> this is a local bill. I, yes. I've done a lot of these because yes. I represent a lot of these fire districts. I don't think we should take any position okay. simply Thank because you. it's just for that district. Mm -hmm. Very good. I'll, I'll that's a motion. Right. Position. Second. Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 No position. I don't know why it's on, yeah, on this I list here. But, uh, only three left. Next one is H5721. The act would amend the period for declaration of candidacy from the last consecutive Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of June, the second consecutive Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of in June, and would change the date of the primary election from the eighth Tuesday preceding the biennial state elections to the last Tuesday in August preceding the biennial elections. So this is basically changing the time frame mm -hmm. a little bit. Okay. Uh, Bob, do you have any thoughts on this? No. Staff has no position no. on that because um, it would be changing the way, especially the way we run primaries. It would give us more time between the primary and the general election, but at this time, we have no position. But would you want more time? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I would think that would be a good thing. Um, I, that's why I was going to ask you to say more about the about the no position. Yeah, my only, if my you only have question it. would be that second <clears throat> Monday. Does that does that interfere with the holiday, the, the June holiday, Juneteenth? Is that would that ever interfere with that? That would be my only question. But I would think more time would be a good thing. But. I, I would have thought so too. Yeah. I think for us, it doesn't impact us as much. A week more would be better, but we have enough time between the primary mm -hmm. and the general to set okay. up. But for the Secretary of State's office, they're up against the MOVE Act, which is the 45 days for the right. mail okay. ballots. Um, it would impact them by moving it up because it gives them a little bit more time is to... Is this something they support? Is this their bill? I believe so, yes. I, I that's something they that they support. support. Yeah, that's their bill. Yeah. I mean... I would, move support. I would move okay. that we would support it okay. for that. I mean, I mean, they can work out that, their holiday. Partners. They can work yeah. out that mm -hmm. holiday particularly, yep. but so, yeah, that's fine. All in favor of the motion to support, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The ayes have it. We support the bill. At least the subcommittee supports the bill. <laughs> uh, next bill is H5723. The act would provide <sighs> that a driver privilege card shall not be a valid form of this of identification for municipal voting purposes. I would vote either in opposition or to oppose it. This is a reactionary bill to the bill that we heard Second. earlier. And the legislation around driver privilege card already says you can't use it for identification for voting. Okay, so the motion is to take no position. Is that right? That's fine. Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> uh, okay, I just have no position. Next bill is, uh, well, it seems to be uh, 
the same as the Senate bill, 5956. Uh, what's in these cards? No, it says no, 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 yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, it's a different bill, yeah. This yeah, this act would modify the timeline, mm -hmm. timeline that Electra must submit an application to receive a mail ballot from 21 days prior to the day of election to 14 days prior to the day of election. This act would also modify the application for any qualified elector to vote by emergency mail ballot from 20 days prior to the date of election mm -hmm. to 13 days prior to the day of election. Staff supports this. Uh, yeah, this anybody would, talk this, about this? This would be an aid to the municipalities. Right? It would. Yes. Yes. It would. Okay. All right. I'll move support. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 So, so be it. Subcommittee supports that. Next is House Bill H5958. Uh, this act would allow voters to choose to vote by mail for a period of two years for both primary and general elections in the year they submit their absentee voting application or the year thereafter upon acceptance by the local board of canvases. So in, in my understanding, this is basically a, it would be automatic in the second year that they would they wouldn't mm. have to request it. No, the they would year. receive one, right? Yeah, they, would, they would just get a mail ballot the second year. Yes. Automatically. The only thing I'm wondering is what if someone changes their mind and they decide they don't want to vote by mail ballot the second year, but I don't know. I mean, I would support otherwise, but that's, uh, that's just a curiosity. Um, well, we indicated support here, but only for one year. Um, similar to you, Akava voters, they can apply for a ballot and receive a, a ballot automatically for that whole year, for one calendar year. Um, this here, this proposal would be two years, so it would be the election cycle plus the year after the election cycle, which would be special elections if they came up. Yeah. But we, we yeah. felt as a staff that the one year made sense because you could apply for the primary and get the general election ballot um, automatically um, or the PPP ballot in the primary and the general election. However, extending it another year would probably add to some confusion if you were getting a ballot, let's say, automatically for a special election that you weren't interested in voting for. Um, voting, but I'm for assuming, example. And I hear that. Yeah, no, because I, I that's, thank you for explaining that because I was very confused. And, but I think it would be helpful that there's so many people that don't know special elections are happening or even ballot questions uh, if, when they change the language to middle schools. Um, mm -hmm. I, I actually think that maybe it would be helpful to have it, but that's just, again, mm -hmm. someone as a voter that I, we've seen people not voting in special elections because they have no idea they're happening. That's true. I'm, so. I'm going to move support. I mean, I, I think the extra year, it, it could be problematic, mm -hmm. but it also could be helpful. So mm -hmm. I'm going to move. I'm going to move to four. Second. Mm -hmm. Miguel, I have, to have one question. And to uh, Jenny's point, if someone gets the mail ballot application, <coughs> a mail ballot, and decides not to vote by mail ballot, but shows up at the poll, what happens? They would vote a provisional ballot. Okay. Because they had requested a, a, a ballot and it, it had been sent to them. So they would vote by provisional ballot. As long as they don't mail that mail ballot back to the Board of Elections, then the provisional ballot will be counted. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Chairman, I have to go. Okay. I'm so sorry. Well, thank you for thank coming. You. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Take sorry. care. You want to well, vote on this before you yeah. go? Yes. Yes. Just yes. Vote on this one. Okay. I was going to say. Yes. Like you so, vote okay. Go. So all in favor Voting say aye. 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 no. Thank you. Voting is really important. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Masala. Okay, the next bill is H5956. Five, 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 one. Five, is, is it 5961? Yeah, 5961. Thank you. Uh, this act would require certain candidates for state and municipal uh, political offices and political action committees designated a financial institution as a depository for campaign funds. So, been, so basically, they have to identify the bank where they maintain their checking account. That's correct. Yes. I, I, I think Rick would want something like that. No? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. He had no position yeah. on this. Doesn't it seem like it would be a good thing? Though? Yeah, I would think so. How is it? How do we know now? Like, if they aren't, if they're filing reports, do we see? Don't we don't see what specific? 
Don't we pull, like look at their bank statements? We do at the end of the year. Right, but this would include it, so. Well, I think it'd be a good idea. I, I, I will support. Okay, second? Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 We, we support the bill. Next bill is H5962. Oh, this is uh, this bill would define accounts payable as a credit extended by an outside vendor and they're on their course of business and not as a campaign contribution. Okay, the act would also raise the minimum aggregate reporting amount to $200 per year and exempt the candidate from minimum aggregate reporting requirements. The act would also raise the contribution limit for individuals and political action committees to $2,000 per year. The act would further include public financing for primary elections, beginning with the 2026 election cycle, with reimbursement of the primary winner for campaign expenditures. Additionally, the act would prohibit public financing for any candidate with outstanding fines owed to the Board of Elections. Okay. Yep. Finally, the Act would define the term fair market value and usual and normal charges for goods and services for donated campaign expenditures. Uh, let's see. 5962. Bob, do you have any thoughts about this one? Oh, it's not yet. Yeah, Miguel. Miguel? Uh, I, this isn't a, our bill, but I know that the sponsors, and speaking with Rick, they did um, a contact Rick to, uh, for his um, input on some of these changes, and uh, this is considered an omnibus bill. It's very extensive, and he, um, I, uh, Rick, had mentioned that it does um, tighten up the, the portions of the campaign finance laws, increases enforcement, increases the contribution limits, which is important now due to inflation. Um, inflationary pressures, obviously more expensive to run a campaign. Um, and um, it, it does, um, you know, extends public funding to campaigns during the primary election period, but but it does not permit public financing of campaigns if they owe campaign financing, uh, campaign finance fines to us. Um, so he did uh, in, indicate his support uh, for the for the legislation based on all these changes that are being proposed here. Well, I have one question. Uh, right now, we have public financing for people running in the general election, and that's uh, state-supported funds, I guess, from uh, 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 appropriations and also by taxpayers checking off uh, on their uh, tax returns. Uh, now, where's the money coming from to, to provide public financing for primaries? you have a lot more people running in the primaries than in the general election. You could have several candidates running in the primary for the same office. It would all, uh, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, but we would be appropriated the same funds to run the, the public financing in the primary that we would in the in the general election. It would come from the same uh, source of money. Uh, that's correct. We would probably have two line items, a line item for money for the primary, a line item for the general. So there'd be less money for the general election. Or not, because it's only for the people that won the primary for the general. So the there person who wins the primary is going to, get be, back, going to get back the money? They're going to be reimbursed? They will get paid. They can submit their reimbursement. That is correct. Up to what amount? Well, that we don't. Right, but they get reimbursement anyway at the general, right? The they, winner, they the, do. the person who's involved in the general election mentioned. would get. So it, it's it's not an increase in people. It's just not sooner the, that they would get it. Correct. So if you expended all your money in the primary, yep. you'd be entitled to get that to start for the general election. Which you, you get it anyway, but you don't get it until after the general now. <clears throat> yeah, but you can run in the general election and you're entitled to say, I want to get publicly financed by my campaign. You can apply for it and get the money, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether or not you ran in the primary. So if you run in the primary, you have X, X, X dollars expended in that primary. You go into the general election, you have Y dollars. So those two amounts are, are you know, are, are quite a significant amount, mm -hmm. right? So if you if they're going to be paid 
reimbursed for the primary, are they, are they going to get an additional amount of money for the general election? Um, I don't believe that either Miguel or I could answer that when right you, now. When you submit the request, or if I submit a request for a reimbursement, is it on my whole election, primary and general? No, time? it's just on the general. It's just on general? Oh, yeah. so it would increase the amount. Yeah, it's going to increase the amount. Would increase the amount. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, I can support the bill, but yeah. that piece I really can't. So I guess we could say support in part. <laughs> well, can we can we support with the? <laughs> can, yeah, can we support without supporting the, um, the reimbursement? The reimbursement for primaries. <clears throat> If that's if that's what yeah. your concern yeah. is, I, I don't know. Can we just say more? Say more about the like the you're being against that portion is is it that look? Like, what do you? Why do you think that would be an issue that they would have increased costs uh, or increased reimbursement? Because it's going to be additional additional expenditures. Yeah. Okay. Going to go up. But in terms of for us, that would be allocated by the general by the general assembly. Yeah. Yeah. The, it is yeah. general assembly. Yeah, I just yeah. from from working like in a primary, you know, yeah. sometimes you spend funds in a primary and then you yeah. don't have enough to run against the candidate yeah. who maybe yeah. didn't have a primary. But yeah, no, and I understand, you know, Chairman Joe. I, I mean, I would move to to support yeah. as I'll, is. I'll I'll second the motion to support. Okay, so all in favor say aye. Aye. Well, I'll I'll support it too. I mean, I think maybe we can well, without make a little, an invitation. With that little caveat <laughs> of our concern. Okay. Uh, concern about payment of primary expenditures. Okay. Oh, we've come to the last bill. Uh, H6103, the act would make general state, oh, would make the general state holidays the date on which primaries for election of state candidates as well as on which national convention delegates and presidential preference primaries are conducted. Oh. Is this essentially the, the so schools are closed? It would make it a, this is a state holiday. That would make it a state holiday. Schools are not part of this bill. Yeah, this, this is a, this is a, this right. is a, this to actually make it a holiday. Correct. Well, then what about the people that work? I believe. What about you all? <laughs> Don't you have to be working? Oh, we sure. they you, we work they because <laughs> we're we're here because we run elections. So right. that's why we're here. They're the essential workers. Yeah. That's what yeah, right, right. right. When they have a snow day, we're essential <laughs> right, on right, a PPP right. day. Um, this is interesting because they want to, this bill would make every four years the presidential preference holiday a state holiday. But the September primaries are not state holidays. Right. The November elections are. So on a state holiday, all state and municipal offices are closed, except for Board of Canvases and the Board of Election? I don't know if this would go into the municipal level, because there are holidays that the municipalities um, honor that we do not, sure. observe that we do not. So this says state holiday. As soon as on a state holiday, the state closes down, right? Except for the Board of Elections and the Secretary of State's office. That's right? correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I. You want to take no position? Yeah, I'm okay. I, I'll move. I'm okay taking no position. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 No position taken. That takes care of this. Uh, Bob, is there anything else we have to address? Not at this time, Chairman. Um, now what?
we will do, we are going to schedule a board meeting for 2 p.m. on Tuesday, March 21st, in which you will bring your recommendations to the full board. Okay. You want that recommendation in writing? We will put that together. We will okay. create a list for the full board. Okay. Of, be of, from, from this, we have what yeah. you have decided on all these pieces of legislation yeah. today. Okay, Is great. We'll get it. We'll get yeah. it to you. <laughs> Uh, but I didn't we we yeah. will. Uh, I took some notes, but okay. not detailed notes. But Bob has been taking detailed notes. I this. have, and right. Patty has. Yes, so excellent. we're working in tandem over here. Bob, the packet here entitled "Proposed Legislation." Is that our homework for the next? That was meeting? legislation that you have previously voted upon to support. Okay, but it was it is part of an election bill that has been submitted this year. But you've already been, you've already taken that up. At at this point, you have no other bills to review. So we don't have to vote on on this packet at all. That's correct? already been voted yeah. upon. Okay. All right, it's been Good. voted upon. I'll move to adjourn. Okay. Any second? Second. All in favor, say aye. Ayes have it. Subcommittee is adjourned. I want to thank Danny and Lou for attending, and Marcella, Bob, and Miguel. Thank you very much. <laughs>